NVIDIA stock. Tick symbol NVDA. I know, I know, it's been not doing too well. It's been continually declining. Bad, bad, bad day after that is the only way to describe how the stock has been. But over the past month or so, it hasn't been too bad. Yes, at the end of last week, it wasn't going too well. Down 4%. And by the way, that's not a five-day return. That's not a one-month return. That's a single-day loss of 4.05%. But if we zoom out a bit, it hasn't actually been too bad. Over the past five days, we're actually up 6.23%. In fact, over the past one month... We've gone positive from that low of around 145 bucks. Now we're up over 19, 20% in value. So not too bad. But the further we zoom out, worse it gets. Over the past six months, down 22.42%. In fact, year to date now, the stock is down 42.5%. One year returns, still not that good. Down 10.24%. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, listen, Lockie, you were praising the stock at the end of last year. You were praising the stock mid last year. Why in the world? Has it declined so much? Why is it continually falling with the marketplace? If this is such a wonderful company on a fundamental level, why does it continue to decline? It's a very fair question for, for new investors, for people new to the marketplace. It's completely understandable to be frustrated with these continual declines. Because when you look at NVIDIA on a fundamental level, when you analyze profitability, financial stability, the, the growth rates relative to the valuation in place, you know, it looks unreasonable. The continual declines just aren't justified given the quality of the business. But what you're not accounting for, what you're not factoring in to your investment equation is human emotion, is fear, is doubt, is anxiety. There's very human emotions. And those things, those things almost always have a greater impact on the stock market than any rational analysis, than any numbers you could possibly formulate. But we have to remember, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. In the short term, these emotions went out. In the short term, volatility comes to fruition because people are stressed out, people are anxious, people are have anxiety about these broader macroeconomic factors that aren't very favorable right now. In fact, I think 78% of Americans think there's going to be a recession within the next two years. Naturally, when that type of ideology is in play, we're going to see volatility. But as I said, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine. In the short term, emotions went out. Over the long term, the stock market is a weighing machine. And you may ask yourself, what is weighed on the scales of the stock market over long term? Well, the fact of the matter is, it's numbers like this. What's weighed over long term in the stock market, what's get you long term returns in the stock market, is numbers like this. The actual reality of the companies you own. Again, the profitability, the financial stability, the people running the company, these simple fundamental metrics, if you can understand them, if you can analyze them, especially in relation to a company growing as fast as NVIDIA is, that's how you do well over time. That's how you win out over the long term. So, despite the volatility, despite the doubt, despite the, the fire sale on the stock right now, or because of the fire sale on the stock right now, I encourage you to take another look at NVIDIA. Investigate the company, not the, the stock graphs, not the graphs that everyone looks at and says, well, my stocks went down, bad. Look at the numbers. Look at the reality. Look at the actual tangible fundamentals of what you're buying. Because when you do that, and when you do that in relation to something like NVIDIA, you get a vastly different story. When we see these type of declines, we think obviously not good, awful company, and they'll be exiting the position. But when we look at these numbers, the reality we get is very different. We see a very healthy cash to debt ratio, a cash to debt ratio of 1.74, the ability if they so desire to instantaneously pay off all their debt obligations and then still have massive operational free cash flow constantly flowing into their business, allowing them to reinvest, build up their company and think about it. What's taking place within NVIDIA's business? What's happening within the company right now? Right now, we're seeing a transition. They're moving away from that discretionary consumer-oriented division and more towards the data center business, more towards consistent revenue streams from institutional level clients. And what that gives them is more financial stability. It means even in the face of this potential recession or the recession that I believe is perhaps almost already here, they have consistent free cash flow. They have consistent earnings. Yes, less and less of their business over time is being tied to those cyclical factors of consumer demand or the crypto market. What it's being tied to now is more institutional clientele and more secular growth in, in line with, with Meta, Microsoft, AWS, Amazon, the likes of, of those companies, even Google and their, um, their new cloud division, which is yet to hit profitability, but could hit, hit profitability quite soon. All these other metrics tell a very similar story. Equid assets of 0.58, debt to equity of 0.44, debt to EBITDA 
of 1.05 and that interest coverage of 45, they all tell a very simple yet very powerful narrative. And that is that this company is not going away. It's here to stay. Financial stability is very evident within this business. And despite what the market's telling you, despite the fear being prevailed within the marketplace, financial stability is still very much present within this company. And that's reflected in that Altman score. Altman score of 16.26, giving you a very clear picture of what you're buying, telling you that there's financial stability, telling you that there's financial certainty, telling you that despite the forces prevailing within the marketplace, despite the negative sentiment around the business, this company isn't going away. It's here to stay. For Altman score, very, very high. Altman score, by the way, indicates the chances of a bankruptcy or business failure within the next two to three years. And so with Altman score so high, well within the safe range, that means within the next two to three years, chance of going bankrupt, chance of the company disappearing, virtually zero. This company's here to stay. It's not going away. Profitability, by the way, is even better. Profitability stands with net margins of 32.02% across the entire semiconductor industry, one of the single most profitable industries in the world. NVIDIA is better than 94.67% of all other companies within that space. And also historically, they're absolutely killing it. Historically, they're only 4% of their historical, the highest net margins they've ever achieved. That's the reality of what's going on within this business. When you see the, the stock rise, when you see the declines, you might think, well, they're not as profitable anymore. The business can't possibly be as good if they're seeing these continual declines. Yet the fact of the matter is, if you actually look at the numbers, the company hasn't changed. If anything, the company is incrementally improving over time. Yes, they aren't the highest net margins. They're off by 4% from the high, but still very, very competitive. Very, very competitive, not only within the semiconductor space, but across companies more broadly. Think, give me another company. Name another company that is growing in excess of 38% annually on an EBITDA basis and is maintaining operating margins of 32%. I don't think you can name another one. Yes, there are more profitable companies. Yes, there are companies growing faster. But that synergistic combination of both profitability and growth at the same time, no one really competes. No one's really quite up there with the same scale and velocity that NVIDIA is performing at. It's the same with operating margins. Operating margins are also very competitive at 38.27%. Gross margins. Gross margins even standing at 65.25%, which by the way, are historically the highest they've ever achieved. Everything is there. Financial stability is there. Profitability is there. And despite the hate, despite the doubt in the marketplace, despite these persistent continual declines, the business continues to outperform. Yes, we have earnings coming up, and yes, there are apparently supply chain issues. There's supply chain shortages, and so the company may suffer. People have been saying that for the past six months. People have been saying that for the past two earnings calls or so, and yet there's been almost no impact on this company. And you may say, well, you know, inflation's running hot. Inflation is at a 40 year highs, barreling forward at 9.3% year over year. Yes, it is. Yes, inflation is very much present. But think about what is crucial in a business during times of inflation. I would argue that the single most important thing is pricing power, the ability to incrementally raise your prices over time. What gives you an indication of a company's pricing power is those numbers I just showed you. The net margins, the operating margins, the gross margins, if these are healthy, if these are high, that tells you what a company can do. That tells you that profitability is there, that margin retention is there, helping them combat inflation and remain profitable. So financial stability is there. Pro profitability is there. Everything is there. And yet, despite these continual declines, despite the stock being down, I think, from its high, down almost 50%, down 48.11%, despite that, People are still saying the stock is too expensive. People are still seeing those P.E. ratios of 46.43 and the Ford P.E. of 32.47 saying, listen, the company is simply too expensive. Can't possibly be investing in something with such a high P.E. Well, I have news for you. The P.E. ratio is not the be-all, end-all of investing. The P.E. ratio doesn't tell you everything you need to know about valuation. All the P.E. ratio tells you is how much growth predication is priced into a stock going forward. How much do investors, how much do the broader market believe this company can compound and grow over time. And yes, these PEs are pricing in a lot of growth, but it's growth that's reasonable. It's growth that's rational. It's growth that, based upon the past growth rates, is very rational going forward. Look at this. Over the past three years, revenue growth has been consistently at 31.3%, three-year EBITDA growth, as I showed you before, of 38.5%, three-year earnings per share growth of 32.4%, three-year free cash flow growth of 36.7%. These numbers don't lie. These numbers tell a very simple, a very compelling story. It's the story of a company that is not slowing down, a company that is not stopping, that is continuing to be fueled by very powerful secular trends, not discounting or not excluding the metaverse. Think about the necessary. These chips are essential 
for powering the metaverse, for powering Meta, Microsoft, Google, all their metaverse operations, they need these chips that become ever more important. And as the importance grows, so too does the demand. So too does the revenue brought in by this company. The low end of analyst growth assumptions going forward in the next decade, how much analysts think this company can grow going forward in the next 10 years or so, is 35%. Now, if we price it in, if we price in the low end of analyst growth assumptions going forward in the next decade, 35% going forward over the next 10 years or so, 35% going forward in the next 10 years, discount rate of 9%, you could up that to 10% if you want to be more conservative. We know the Fed is increasing rates, so naturally a high discount rate may be more justified. And earnings per share figure of $3.73. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $351.16, a margin of safety of 50.68%. Look at that. That's an easy double your money prospect. That's an easy double your money opportunity for investors who have patience, who have a long-term vision, who don't focus on the next 10, 15 minutes, but instead focus on the next 10, 15 years. If you can do that, then this company's an easy buy. It's an obvious buy. Double your money based upon that current trading price of 173. It has everything we're after. It has the profitability. It has the financial stability. It has the valuation, which at this time is extremely appealing. So if you can ignore the negative sentiment of the marketplace, if you can get over the negative rhetoric, not only around this company, but the market more broadly, then the opportunity is there. And it is simple and easy to see. I think it's an opportunity worth taking. But of course, I encourage you to investigate the business yourself, look into the company before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something more about my current thoughts on NVIDIA with the recent performance of the stock, then please Drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.